Josh Heupel was the 2022 Southeastern Conference Coach of the Year and is a two-time National Coach of the Year finalist, one of only four active FBS head coaches to lead multiple programs to New Year's Six Bowl appearances during the college football playoff era. Josh himself was a national championship winning quarterback at Oklahoma, runner-up for the Heisman Trophy. I also learned uh, after Mike Leach's passing, kind of a bookend on my Mike Leach note. Uh, I, had, uh, I had bought the book Swing Your Sword when Mike was coaching, but didn't read it until after he passed, learning much more about a connection that I had read about uh, in the media, the connection between Mike and Josh, Mike having recruited Josh to the University of Oklahoma, and Mike was its offensive coordinator. Mike's an Aberdeen, South Dakota native, and is the third coach of our group today to be the son of a college football coach. His father, Ken, coached at Division II Northern State University for seven seasons. University of Tennessee head football coach, Josh Heupel. Hello, everybody. I, I know uh, I'm closing up shop here, but uh, to everybody, I want to welcome you to, uh, to Mid-State, to the city of, of Nashville. Uh, hope you guys have had a, a great week uh, here, enjoying some music, enjoying Broadway, and, and, uh, and having some fun. Uh, this, this, uh, this city and this area of the state, Mid-State, is extremely important to the success of Tennessee. Uh, it's Big part of our past success as well, and, and uh, a lot of great ball fans and, and uh, former players that uh, call this place home, and so excited to see them. It's fitting that we're here today uh, for SEC Media Days, our program, because in 44 days, we get an opportunity to kick off uh, against Virginia right here in Nissan Stadium. Looking forward to seeing everybody in Ball Nation uh, show up in droves for, uh, for that, that ball game. As I was getting ready for uh, today, um, you know, just started writing down some notes last night and, and uh, really started to reflect just on uh, the past two years and, and what has transpired uh, inside of our program at our university and, um, you know, where we've come in such a short amount of time. When I took over two years ago, there was so much uncertainty that surrounded our, our program in, uh, in late January. And because of the connection and uh, accountability and, and uh, love and trust that we've built inside of the building with our players and staff, we've been able to climb re uh, re relatively quickly. But uh, to go back to that time, um, you know, we're a program that entered that fall with only 65 scholarships, uh, the uncertainty of an investigation that was taking place on our campus. Uh, I said uh, in a room just like this two years ago that it would be a speed bump uh, for the program, uh, our football program. And uh, a few days ago, we found out that that certainly was the case. Uh, we've navigated it in such a positive way uh, because of uh, the leadership that we have. Uh, phenomenal leadership on our campus uh, from President Boyd uh, to Chancellor Palman to our athletic director. We've been transparent and real uh, and uh, been able to close that narrative uh, on our program and move forward. And I'm not sure that there's a better time to be evolved. Uh, you look at the trajectory of this football program, what's happened over the last two years and where we're going the energy and excitement that surrounds uh, our building every day, the energy that surrounds uh, our fan base, Ball Nation across the country, but also the success that's happening in each and every sport uh, that resides inside of our, our athletic department. Uh, phenomenal leadership with coaches and uh, great student athletes uh, that do things the right way. Um, our program has been player driven from the very beginning. You guys have heard me say that before. Uh, it always will be. Uh, I think great seasons, championship seasons happen because of the leadership and the accountability and connection that happens inside of the locker room. Uh, as I look back on, on our past success, uh, that doesn't happen. Um, I talked about, you know, the 35 guys that left our program through the transfer portal before or right after I took over. Um, we had a lot of guys that stayed, that first year 65 scholarship guys. Those guys that chose to stay, that were connected and cared about the power T, that 21 and 22 class, 
uh, are going to be revered and remembered in an unbelievably unique way uh, because they rebuilt the, the cornerstones of, of Tennessee football uh, for the future. And that ends with an Orange Bowl win last year that we're certainly excited about. Uh, parlayed itself into the success that we've had in the NFL draft over the last two years, uh, 10 draft picks over the last two years, one of the highest numbers in the country. Uh, last year, five guys uh, drafted in the top three rounds, which is second in the country. Um, a lot of really unique things that are happening with their future out inside of the game, but also what they're doing outside, the impact that they've had inside of our community. Uh, we've reset a team record every semester that I've been there. Last semester, we finished with a 3.17 team GPA. Our kids are, are doing it right and, uh, and having a lot of fun competing together on a daily basis. Fortunate to bring three tremendous ambassadors uh, for Tennessee football here today. Uh, Joe Milton, Omari Thomas, and Jacob Warren. Omari and Jacob are uh, residents of this state. Uh, they've grown up with the power T being a, a symbol uh, inside of this border. Joe obviously is a, a great leader and ambassador for our program. Um, you know, the tough thing about only choosing three guys is you only get to choose three. Uh, we have a lot of great guys that uh, are great leaders inside of our program that are a part of our leadership council. They weren't fortunate to be here or I couldn't bring with us, but uh, they are also great representatives of our program. Um, really, a lot of special moments uh, from a year ago, uh, as we look back on, on the 22 season, a lot of special moments, uh, things that our fan base will remember forever, uh, the players inside of the locker room will remember forever, at the same time, uh, fell short of a lot of the goals that we had set for our program. And I'm really excited and proud of what our players have done since they've gotten back on campus in late January. Uh, their ability to reset and refocus and um, be ready to go accomplish a mission uh, together. Uh, individually grow, but collectively get ready to go accomplish a, a mission. Uh, it's a group that's extremely hungry. Uh, they want more, they expect more, and we're certainly excited about embarking on this 23 season. Uh, accountability and consistency in that has been one of the main things that we've focused on this year. Uh, in this conference, you don't get any redos. Uh, you better show up every single Saturday afternoon or evening. Uh, you're going to play great players, great coaches, and you got to be ready for those moments uh, at home or on the road. Uh, and through that, we've uh, tried to increase our leadership and ownership from within our program. I talked about how important that is to me. I think that's where championship seasons uh, lie. And the second thing is we've tried to become more physical. And, and when I say that, everybody thinks uh, about the line of scrimmage. Uh, but it's really at every position and every person inside of our program uh, continuing to grow in that way so that we have an opportunity to be the most physical football team on the field every Saturday. Uh, a ton of excitement that surrounds our program. Uh, 71,000 season tickets sold. Uh, the energy is real inside and outside of our program. Um, but uh, as I said at the end of the bowl game, uh, the best is yet to come for Tennessee football. Excited about this journey with this group of guys in, in this 23 season. And I uh, don't know that there's ever been a better time to be of all. So with that, I'm going to open it up for questions. If you have a question, raise your hand. Price, Arizona, or Alexis, we'll get a microphone to you. Please give your name and affiliation <laughs> and stand up, please. Thank you. Okay, we will uh, start up here on the front row, right here to our right. Hey, Coach Heibel, Brady Penn, Volunteer Country. So with Hendon Hooker, you had a transfer that came in, had some success at the quarterback position. Now you've got Joe at quarterback, who's a transfer himself. And I know you saw that growth with Hendon. Talk a little bit about what it's been like for you to watch the growth from Joe. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the great stories in college football in the era of the transfer portal is, you know, his trust and uh, ability uh, to recognize areas that he can continue to grow in and trust the people around him, uh, that we have his best interests at heart, uh, understand that within our scheme, he's going to have an opportunity to do everything that he wants to, uh, which is be one of the best players in, inside of college football. Um, and through that process, you know, over the last, you know, 18 to 24 months, uh, he's continued to grow in, in his comfort of who he is, what he's about, how he wants to approach and attack every single day. Uh, how he wants to grow as a football player, meaning fundamentally at the quarterback position, along with understanding offensive and defensive schemes uh, so that he can put his eyes in the right spot, get his body in the right spot to be consistently accurate with the football. And then how he wants to impact his teammates. 
Uh, nobody inside of our program was surprised uh, by the success that he had when he got his opportunity last year as a starter. He played extremely well uh, when he got into football games throughout the course of the season, but his preparation, his urgency, how he practiced, um, all those things led himself to everybody inside of our building believing that he was going to play at that type of level. And he's got a lot more out there. He's had a great offseason. Uh, for 15 practices in spring ball, did a great job of working, navigating the, the pocket, being extremely accurate with the football. I'm really excited to get back on the grass with him uh, during the course of training camp. I believe he's poised to have a, a great 23 season. Coach, we'll go over to my left and your left, second row, Eric. Uh, Eric Bailey with the Tulsa World. Uh, Josh, you've been around college football your entire life. I was just curious, what does it mean to you to be on the College Football Hall of Fame ballot? And what do you think your players know about your playing career and also the national championship that you won at Oklahoma? Yeah, they don't know enough about my playing career. Uh, day one in training camp, I'm going to make sure we put a couple highlights up there. Um, the, uh, none of them of me running around either, by the way. Uh, no, nah, I just, uh, um, it's a great honor uh, to be looked at. Um, in that way, um, to, uh, to be on the ballot, to, to be a, a, a potentially a part of the Hall of Fame. Um, a year ago, we got an opportunity to recognize uh, one of our teammates, Roy Williams, that got a chance to go in. Um, you know, special player, um, had such a huge impact on the game uh, and certainly what we did there at Oklahoma. Uh, those things only happen, though, because of the players uh, that I got an opportunity to be in the locker room with every single day. Forever grateful to, uh, to all of those guys. Um, you know, everybody on the offensive side of all the five offensive linemen, but everybody on that team, it was uh, a special team. And, um, you know, it's uh, certainly made a huge impact in, in my life, um, part of why I'm up here today, uh, to be honest. And so forever indebted to those guys and very appreciative, um, but humbled by that recognition as well. Okay, we'll stay over on that same side on the aisle, far out. Hey, Josh, uh, Tyler Palmett here with the Oklahoma. And, you know, a lot of Oklahoma fans, they remember your time very fondly and have followed you along as you become a, a head coach and watched your career. Um, and I know that relationship with, with OU is a little complicated, but what was it like seeing, you know, Oklahoma on the schedule uh, in, in 2024? Yeah, the, I mean, the, the relationship with Oklahoma really isn't complicated. I got nothing but great memories uh, of the people and, uh, you know, my time there. Um, I, I certainly do. And it's a huge, you know, I got a chance to talk about Mike Leach uh, a few minutes ago back in, uh, backstage and, and uh, in the interview and you know everybody there helped shape who I am and, and where I'm at today and, and uh, still got a lot of great friends and teammates that live back there so um, the opportunity to go back to Oklahoma yeah I wish they were coming to, to Knoxville first but uh, uh, I say that jokingly but um, looking forward to that opportunity that's a long ways down the road man focused on 23 but uh, that'll be a unique day in my career obviously to go back there. Coach, we'll go down the center aisle about three quarters of the way back. Hey, Coach, Christian Skelton with Fox Sports Knoxville. You've been able to retain your entire coaching staff aside from Cody Burns and Alice Golish since you've been on campus. How big is stability in your coaching staff for your program? Yeah, you try to create a culture uh, that uh, coaches want to be a part of. Uh, they feel like they are part of the process. You want to create a culture where families get a chance to be a part of the process as well. Uh, I grew up the, the son of a coach, and those are the greatest memories of, of my childhood. Um, and so I think it's really important that, that they're a part of it. And if you do those things and you have the resources that we have at Tennessee, uh, you're able to, to have some stability within your staff, which is vitally critical uh, to, to your players. Um, them understanding what they're walking into every single day, not having to rebuild uh, an entire relationship from, from the ground up, um, we've been able to replace those guys. And you want staff to grow, too, right? Like, Alex will do a great job uh, down at South Florida. I want guys to get head jobs from, from where we're at. Um, but guys aren't just leaving to take another job either. And so we've actually been able to promote from within because they were the right guys. There's so much consistency. All the things that we were navigating as you take over a program and in year one and year two, uh, I think it was vitally important that we've been able to have that. And uh, it's a big part of, of you know, our continued growth this offseason here in 23. Coach, we're going we're gonna to go in front of me about three quarters of the way back. Yeah, Coach Joey Knight with the Tampa Bay Times. Could you expand on, you said, 
you feel Alex will be a great head coach. What are his traits? Why do you think he'll be a great head coach? Competitive, uh, willing to work. Uh, I think those are two traits that, uh, that drive you um, every minute of the day uh, to continue to, to help your program grow. Um, and, uh, you know, you look at that, um, it's where the starting blocks are, in my opinion. And uh, then he's got a great ability to communicate. And uh, he's hired a lot of really good, good people. Some of them were in our building a year ago, some young staff um, that uh, will be great coaches. So uh, I'm really excited about, you know, where he's going to take that program. Coach will go straight in front of me, first row. Teresa Walker, the Associated Press. Josh, the in these days, you've, you're almost in a rare situation where you've got a quarterback you had now going into your third season. He's been here. Uh, with the transfer portal, is it challenging? And how grateful are you that you're not having to deal with getting a quarterback up to speed out of the portal and, and get them up to speed in your offense all before the season starts? And, 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 and how nice is it to have Joe in this situation? Yeah. It is rare that uh, that you're able to keep quarterbacks inside of your quarterback room. The days of having you know four or five quarterbacks consistently, I, I think those are probably not real anymore. Uh, guys want to have the opportunity to play and compete early. Um, I think it's rare that a young man like Joe is able to to sit back and trust the people around him that we have his best interests at heart recognize the areas that he can and needs to grow in to become the player that he's capable of, and also know that if I stick this thing out and I compete hard every single day, I'm going to grow, and in what we do offensively, I'm going to be able to do the things that I wanted to inside a college football landscape. Uh, those are rare things, and, and uh, it takes a really mature guy, which Joe has proven to be. Coach, we'll go here right here in the middle of the front row. Coach Brooks Austin with Dogs Daily. Being an offense that prioritizes pace, I'm curious your thoughts on the new rule change with the clock no longer stopping on first downs. And additionally, there's a potential rule with, you know, the hash marks maybe aligning themselves with the NFL. You also prioritize space. I'm interested in your thoughts on that potential change. Um, the clock rule at the end of the first half, um, I think everybody's going to be playing in it the same way. I don't think it's going to have a dramatic different effect on us versus uh, another offense. Um, the uh, how you manage your timeouts might be a little bit different at the, the end of you know regulation or at the end of the half. Um, all in all, we'll see what the numbers you know play out to be. But you know, there's a series of the game that's probably taken away in general for every team, you know, because of some of the, the clock rolls. But we'll see how that plays out uh, during the course of the year. Coach will go in straight in front of me about three quarters of the way back. Coach uh, Tim Buckley with the Daily Memphian in Memphis. What does it mean to the interior of your defense to have Omari Thomas not consider going into the draft? And what does his personality bring to your locker room? Uh, Omari is a guy that loves to have fun. He's got great energy, energy every single day. He's become a really strong leader um, in being able to command guys. And, and that can be positively. It can be trying to get them to, to go accomplish the things that they need to. Uh, in the weight room or on the practice field. Uh, he's got a great voice inside of our, our locker room. Uh, as I said, a tremendous leader. Um, vitally important uh, for us as we continue to try to take steps on the defensive side of the football. A year ago, we took a massive, massive jump in our ability to defend the run. Omari and the guys that we brought back a year ago were a huge part of that. Uh, expect all of those guys to make another jump. Uh, they did a great job in spring ball. Uh, fundamentals, technique, consistency uh, from play to play, day to day. Um, and, you know, one of the other areas that we've had to improve upon is the ability to affect the passer uh, with our front four, not just bringing pressure. Uh, we need that because of situational, uh, situational football. we got to get better on third downs, third and long in particular. And uh, I thought those guys did a great job this spring. Uh, Coach Garner, Coach Eckler, what those guys have done up front, uh, really happy and, and pleased and excited to get to training camp with them. Coach, we'll go back over here to the middle section on the right along the aisle. Hi, Coach. Right here. Over here. Sorry. Right. Travis Gailey with orangebloods.com. With Texas coming into the league now, which school has the real claim to being able to call itself UT? There's only one real UT. One right shade of orange. We'll go all the way to the back, all the way in the left-hand side, back of the room. Yeah, Coach. Edgar Thompson, the Orlando Sentinel. 
how much of a catalyst was the Florida game, uh, given the history of the series, recent history that is, and the rivalry to you guys' season last year? Um, catalyst, yes, at that point in the season, but every season there's steps that you have to take, and, and in some ways there's benchmarks, but there's opportunities for growth. And I thought throughout the course of the, of the football season last year, we continued to get better a majority of the season. And that's what good teams do. Uh, the Florida win was a big win, absolutely, for our fan base as much as anything, meaning uh, in recent years we hadn't had the same amount of success as, as we would have liked to. Um, but for our players, there was great confidence going into it. Uh, and yes, great confidence coming out of it as well. Okay, we'll go to the middle section, right in front of the camera, all the way towards the back. Hey, Rob Brown, Sideline Sports Memphis. What's moving the needle more in college football now from when you played coming out of South Dakota, offensive or defensive coordinators, and what are the expectations of a defense with, against an offense like yours? <clears throat> well, my expectation for the defense that we're playing isn't for them to have a whole lot of success, but that's my viewpoint. Um, I, in football, you got you to play all three phases together. Offense, defense, and special teams. And at the end of the day, we're always trying to find a way to, to be plus one. That can be three to two or whatever it needs to be. And uh, at the end of the day, every side's got to grow together. Coach, we'll go over here to our right hand side over here on the far right section. Hey, Coach. Over right there. There we go. Steve Moulton, WZZN out of Huntsville, Alabama. I hope you're doing well. I uh, wanted to ask about tampering. That has certainly been a subject that's been brought up quite a bit here lately. Uh, what is, how big of an issue is it, and what would be a good starting point to alleviate this issue? Um, how big of an issue it is, I don't know. I think there's so many people that are involved in the recruitment of players. Could be high school coaches, uh, could be workout facilities, uh, seven on seven coaches, whatever. You know, the, there's so many different dynamics um, that go into it. I don't know how you stop the communication uh, completely at, at any one point. So. I don't have a silver bullet for that issue, oh, similar to a lot of other issues that, that maybe we're trying to navigate inside of college football. But uh, there's a lot of smart people that uh, are working on finding answers to those things. Coach, we'll stay on the same side over on the right-hand side in front of the SEC logo. Jacob Goins, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Besides wins on the football field, what's a goal or goals for you as a head coach at the University of Tennessee? Standard at Tennessee is to win championships. It's, uh, it's pretty clear. Um, you know, I think we're top 10 in the history of college football and wins, first round draft picks, bowls, bowl wins. Um, the standard is to, to compete at the highest level and win championships. You know, for us, that starts in the Eastern Division, um, which everybody knows that uh, there's a lot of good football that's played in that division. Okay, Coach, we'll stay on that same side in the front row right here. Coach Dan Harrelson, Ballswire. Uh, speaking of recruiting, obviously it's a big part of the game. Uh, Brian Kelly mentioned this week that in the future he thinks AI will be a driving force for intriguing options. You know, trying to see what player profiles out there that kind of fit what you want to do offensively, defensively. What's your opinion on that going forward? Uh, AI is infiltrating in, in so many different areas from, from business, uh, I'm sure in sport too. Um, is eventually uh, becomes a resource probably uh, for, for everybody inside of college football. Um, you know, how quickly um, that part takes inside of our program, I can't give you an answer on, but uh, I'm sure that at some point it will. Stay in that second section, two rows back, just right behind. Hey, Josh, Andy Wichry with On3. The Knoxville News Sentinel reported that the Tennessee Attorney General may have used the, uh, the NIL law in the state to threaten to sue the NCAA and maybe prevent a bull ban. I know there's a different regime, but what is it like to have the, uh, the state AG behind the program and willing to support um, the school's athletes? Uh, well, I, I said it earlier when I, when I opened up and in my opening remarks, just, you know, our administration and their willingness to fight for innocent student athletes. Um, you know, I mentioned the 65 scholarships, players walking into that first season because there was huge hurdles in our first two years to get to this point that we've had to climb out of. And, um, you know, the, the easiest thing would have been for our administration and for me too 
is to take a bull band in, in year one. But that wasn't right. The, the guys that were left were, were innocent guys and new staff. You know, there's nobody left from administration in our athletic department to uh, the football side of it, football staff to uh, our players that was really involved. In, and so uh, it was right to, to compete and give those guys an opportunity to, to fulfill or have an opportunity to fulfill all the things that they wanted to inside of the, a, a college football season for those guys that were going out. And, um, you know, appreciate our administration and, and everybody uh, fighting for those guys. Okay, we have one right up here, Arizona. You come up right here on the front aisle, second row, Bob. Uh, hey, Josh, Bob Holt, Arkansas, the Democrat Gazette. How you doing? I had a two-parter. If you forget the second part, Kevin will help you remember. He's, he's good at that. Okay. Uh, I know you talked a lot about Joe already, but and I know he, he was experienced before the Orange Bowl, but how big was it for him to have the kind of game he did for him, for the team, everybody? And then you, you mentioned the, the uh, investigation and your opening remarks. How, how good is it just have that, some closure <coughs> to that, and have it behind you? Yeah. For Joe, uh, I think it was solidif solidified all the work that he had put in that he would go out and perform and play. Uh, it was proving himself right as much as anything. It wasn't proving anybody wrong. It was about proving himself right. And uh, it was great for him. It was great for the guys around him uh, to see that hard work does pay off and, and take advantage of your opportunities and be prepared when it comes. The second part of your question was what I'm going to ask. How it felt after it's been resolved. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the NCAA stuff, um, you know, for our current roster, they, they really hadn't thought about it or focused on it uh, very much. I can tell that in, in the way that the team meeting went after the, the news came out. I was out of town, so we had to do it virtually um, after their workouts, uh, which was right after the news came out. Um, but you know, for, for how we handle recruiting, um, you know, the guys that signed with us in the last 18 to 24 months that trusted what we were saying to them, the transparency of the dialogue that we had with them, um, it was unbelievably satisfying to, to get over that hump. You're not dealing with unknowns now. Um, you're not dealing with other programs that are beating you up and in some ways sensationalizing what's going to happen. Uh, I was able to have great trust in what our administration was ta talking to us about. We were, you know, consistent and clear in that messaging to our, our recruits. Um, and that's why, you know, we've been able to recruit at a really high level. But uh, it's great to have it in the rearview mirror, not something that you're, you're driving by all the time. Coach, we'll go right in front of my table here, second row on the aisle. Coach Heupel, Drew D. Arman, WZZN Radio, Huntsville, Alabama. I wanted to ask you about Squirrel White from my state. Uh, he had a big orange bowl, and you guys have done a great job developing Cedric Tillman, going on to the NFL, and now Jalen Hyatt. Talk about his future, and he really kind of stepped up in that bowl game when both those guys uh, didn't play. Yeah, young player that we knew was going to play at a really high level when given the opportunity. It's been great to see him grow from, from a quiet young kid that came on the campus and is somebody that's got a ton of personality and energy and affects his teammates in a positive way. Great work habits. Uh, as tough as, as they come uh, from day one, he's willing to stick his face into anything and, and be extremely physical and compete really hard. Um, he's got elite speed, great ball skills, has the ability to be a great route runner, anticipate him having a great year. Uh, you guys saw him perform extremely well in, in the Orange Bowl. Coach, we'll take one final question in the section in front of me, about halfway back on the aisle. Hi, Coach. Clark Brooks on three and SEC Stack Hat. Well, one of the sexiest aspects of your offense is that vertical choice. I think a really uh, underrated aspect is the eclectic approach you have in that run game. Only 12 reps separated your most run, run concept from your sixth. Would you mind elaborating on how having that type of balance approach on the ground really does help facilitate things on the back end and help things come open? Yeah, I love your passion and energy for our offense, man. Uh, <laughs> might need you to bring you in on the recruiting, recruiting pitch. Uh, I think people get caught up in, in the perimeter numbers and, and the quarterback um, development and the, and the quarterback numbers that have been out there. Um, everybody that studies it understands that uh, the secret to our sauce is the ability to run the football. Uh, Coach Ellerby and I have been together. I think we're going on year eight now, um, three different stops. He does an unbelievable job. 
um, from game plan to fundamentals to you know, teaching overall scheme and concepts on the other side of the football. Uh, our five guys continued to grow year one to year two. We took a huge step. They play synchronized, uh, you know, in the tempo that we play at, the ability to communicate and get everybody on the same page uh, does an unbelievable job. So I appreciate you recognizing all those things. Coach Heibel, thank you for your time this afternoon. I appreciate it. Vol Nation, look forward to seeing you here in 44 days. Go Big Orange.